Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dan Sue here uh, with more Stormbound. So, a lot of you guys are probably enjoying the new patch. Um, not not playing against Winter too much anymore, I hope. And Swarm seems to be uh, still doing pretty well. But here is the new deck that I've been piloting, and so far I've been having uh, some great results with it. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, this is the deck list right here. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it. I, I want to jump right into it. So um, the biggest thing that I want to point out is you'll notice that my favorite buddy, First Mutineer, is not in this deck, and it's uh, something that I've been I've been trying out just because I noticed that in games that go a little bit longer, the discard effect actually hurts you more than um, you would think, especially when I'm running North Sea Dog. But more about that later. So let me just show you a couple games um, at around the rank 12 level. Um, I haven't lost um, in in maybe uh, 10, 12 games, so it's a uh, it's a pretty good deck. Um, and I don't I don't know um, about the alternatives to to sub in, but so far I think this is um, one of the one of the better lists that you could be running. <clears throat> so this deck basically um, I I'd say I put I'd say it's more of an aggro deck. It see it see. It seeks to win um, pretty fast. The two star cards of it are Toxic Sacrifice, which at level 4, it um, deals damage to all surrounding units, which is broken as hell. It's a great control tool, and it's a great aggro tool. And um, all in all, it's the card that wins games the most. The second MVP will um, almost definitely be... Um, Kindred's Grace, just because it, it gives you um, insane value. And, um, yeah, those two cards um, by themselves basically just win most of the games. No other deck can keep up. So um, I, I opted for, for um, the one mana for four strength as opposed to two mana for also four strength, basically, on Dubious Hags. Um, it was kind of a toss-up. It, it could have gone either way there. So the general strategy for this deck is basically um, get map control and then the units will win by themselves. You'll notice that I have basically no finishers in this deck, as in I have no two movement cards that can like just pop the opponent for like a fast four or six damage. Um, the only cards that have two movement are my um, are my toads, my three mana toad and my four mana toad, um, and also um, Ubis, who whew, I finally pulled him, so very happy about that. Um, alright, we're going to cycle this, because hopefully we can get Kindred's Grace next turn. Um, play Dubious Hags, and Reign of Frogs. So, you guys are probably already familiar with, um, this Reign of Frogs into Kindred's Grace combo. I will say that, um, a lot of the times people tend to get too greedy with trying to pull it out, because they're like, oh yeah, once I Kindred's Grace I can get, like, so much value um, just on the board immediately, and then because they try to do that instead of defending, they will lose to swarm decks, um, who can, who can just outrun them, even though, like, you have, like, 20 strength at their base. So, um, a lot of times in this deck, Kindred's Grace, um, I don't really get the combo off until later turns, like, 8 mana, 9 mana, but, um, if you can get it off early, like, like, over here we have total map control, like, this is very good. Yeah, see, so he's not dumb. He's gonna. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose um, he didn't want to kill all of my frogs. All right. So we're we're definitely not playing Crimson Sentry. All right. So we didn't actually draw our Kindred's Grace, which um, kind of unfortunate. But we have a lot of frogs on the board. So, if I were to play First Mutineers, the card that I would take out is Brood Sage because it's not actually that good. Um, it's just, it serves a lot of, like, mediocre purposes, which are, like, one, it's an extra frog to Kindred's Grace, and, um, two, like, sometimes you can get some value out by, like, poisoning an enemy and playing Brood Sage, and three, unlike First Mutineers, it doesn't discard a card, which later on, like, lets me get the most value out of North Sea Dog. <laughs> okay, so... He should be uh, pretty done for here. <clears throat> Iron, um, 
what is this uh, ironclad yeah they don't really have um too many tools to defeat um uh like like a, just a lot of value on the board they have a couple cards that can do it but they they all tend to not be that great so here you can see um a little bit of the power of toxic sacrifice i could have north sea dog there and um and also killed both of their units but uh that requires a level four toxic sacrifice and some of you guys don't have it i say if you want to play Shadowfen and you have enough fusion stones to upgrade one card to level four, it has to be Toxic Sacrifice, like, every time. It's so good. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of making a control variant of of, um, of Shadowfen, and um, out of all the, like, non-stable um, cards, like, like Gifted Recruits, um, the card that I'm most definitely going to put in is Toxic Sacrifice, because it's so good. Like, Crimson Sentry serves a similar purpose, but it's four mana, which is just so so much um, less flexible. See, so basically, once we got enough value on the board, like our units are just pushing in by themselves. We can just like overwhelm them. Yeah, so the game is pretty much over by now, but like, like um, as you see, like we can just keep on playing more Kindred's Grace, more Frogs to win. Um, Toxic Sacrifice didn't really um, show up in this game, I guess, but against um, games where the opponent is a lot more aggressive, it's definitely um, a very important card. You guys will witness that later. I think um, with Dubious Hags in in um, the two mana slot, and also um, the 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 copper skin ranger um shadowfen has like an early game that basically um is like as good as swarm now like it's not as good at finishing enemies but it can defend swarm a lot better okay how can we best maximize All right, check this out. So we put it here so that we can definitely fill up his front line. And now, like, we're immune to, like, Blade Storm and Needle Blast. You can play that new card that, um, like, Flooding the Gates, I think, that just kills everything outside the base. But then next turn, he's screwed, so... All right, onwards and upwards. <clears throat> if you want to play this um, this deck and you don't have um, Ubis, the Hunter, which is the one legendary in this deck, um, I would say that a decent replacement is f first Mutineers, um, and then you just go for like a slightly earlier game. I think that um, Ubis is is just a super super good legendary because there is no deck where you only play like like one unit type right like even even this deck like we have green prototypes which is which is a uh, constructs we have um we have the knights uh we have gifted recruits which which is a knight um okay i can live with this um yeah we have like a raven which um when it dies it also spawns a raven for the enemy so so if that's the only Raven on the board, then, then Ubis um, gets that like bonus one damage, which basically matches the one strength Raven. So it's not even like Dubious Hags um, hurts us that bad. <clears throat> Alright, so this is a um, 15 HP Swarm Rush deck. So we'll see how, how um, we fare. Toxic Sacrifice, again, it's, it's going to carry us. Um, this, like, plus North Sea Dog, for example, where we can just put this guy down anywhere. He's one mana, um, he doesn't move, so we, we, we stick him down, he can kill everything. Hmm.
Okay, so I might not even want to uh, play my Toxic Sacrifice this turn just because um, we want to be able to draw it back later. Hmm. Oh, although we can... Okay, now we can Azir Hatchers into Toxic Sacrifice, which is a better play than Crimson Sentry. So but we want to play it in, a, in such a fashion that we can guarantee... Um, that one of the dead frogs, or one of the new frogs, is like adjacent to both of them. So, okay, there we go. Easy. <clears throat> I was actually, um, I was pretty surprised. So, Copper Skin Ranger at level 5, it, um, it has four strength and only poisons two random enemy units. But I think that's actually, in general, more preferable than ha ha having a, a three strength unit that poisons three random enemy units. Because at the point where you're poisoning three, like you're not even sure if if you're going to have like that many units to kill, right? So, hmm. Okay, this is interesting. I, I guess he's not playing like a dedicated rush deck, which is another reason why we were able to hold off the early game so well. Um, so you see our Brute Sage here can give us 5 strength, but Gifted Recruits also gives us 5 strength, so it's like, why even play this guy? Uh, we'll, we'll play him, because we can, um, get more frogs out of this, and then a Kindred's Grace would be more of a blowout. <clears throat> like, you see, we have, we have 2 extra frogs here, so Kindred's Grace, 4 strength per unit, that's an extra 8 strength that Gifted Recruits would not give us. I heard some people saying that um, structures are making a comeback. I think that definitely the devs discover that structures aren't aren't as strong as they like, so they're trying to. But I think it's it's very hard to the way that structures are designed. I think it's very hard to design one that is um, either 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 very very um, good and not broken. It's hard to design one that that just works without people complaining about it. Okay. Let's see. Um, we don't need more frogs. We need... Well, that's not what we needed either, but... Okay. Um, let's play some green prototypes. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we drew our Toxic Sacrifice again, so there's no way this guy's going to kill us at any time soon. The one thing that um, I am worried about being blown out by is um, Vindicators. In fact, because like this guy, uh, he runs like Pillars of Doom. Like It's possible he runs something more unconventional like Vindicators also. Um, that can just, it will eat our frogs up, and it will just destroy, destroy us. Okay. So... See, this is where, like, North Sea Dog, one mana, level three, it's, like, seven strength. Like, we only wasted one mana, in theory, so, like, even two mana for seven strength. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, so he does have Vindicators, but um, it's already too late. Hmm, <laughs> okay.
All right. Yeah, so I think um, everyone's trying to find a way to recover from the nerfs to Swarm and Winter. And as you can see, like, just none of the decks are, are equipped to, to beat, like, um, just, like, so many frogs and so many poison for value. Like, the closest thing I can imagine is, like, um, playing Sharp Fist Exiles. Uh, just because, like, there, I have so many units on the board. But Sharp Fist Exiles is only, it's one unit. So it can only, like, defend against one column. Like, like if it, if, even if it's, like, a huge, like, 40 strength Sharp Fist Exiles. Um... And you're only defending against one column, so like you can like rain of frogs. You can like like use um the the frog spawner to like like jump jump past it. Like like um there's just nothing that can really like defend against uh th this style of play right now, except for like another like poison deck. Uh, and in that case, like if the only deck that can beat the best deck is the best deck, then like well I guess like that's always true, right? So. So yeah, I'm I'm very very impressed with um with how this deck turns out. <clears throat> like originally, I wanted to go with a more um control variant, but the thing is, like there are just so many good early game cards that like this is like the most like controlly that I, like, I ended with. Like I know they buffed um High Priestess Claxi, and she's a very flashy card to use uh for sure. But like I just don't um. I just, I just don't think, um, like, High Priestess Claxi is 8 mana for, like, about the same effect as Kindred's Grace if you have, if you have a lot of frogs. Like, at some point, Kindred's Grace becomes a better Claxi. Hmm... Oh, this play was a lot more obvious than uh, I thought. I thought it was. Okay, so if all goes well, we'll have four units to Kindred's Grace next turn. One, two, three, four. Because this one walks into their base. But if we if we only have like three, then it becomes debatable what what uh we oh okay. Well, this guy is hmm. Okay. Well, um, all right, we can Kindred's Grace next turn, or actually, I mean, we can do something next turn, because this guy literally just let us fill in his base, which I, I think I'll always take that, just because um, it usually prevents them from doing anything. Yeah, it's nice to see like, what a winter deck looks like in, um, Okay. Um, I mean, Kindred's Grace would be for 8 strength right now, which isn't too bad, because we don't have a lot of other nice plays. Okay, here we go. I think I'm going to start calling it Grace, just because Kindred's is so hard to pronounce. Grace, yeah. Has more of a ring to it. Like Hatchers, Recruits, Grace, Toxic Sacrifice. I guess the one deck that could compete with um with us, um, in theory, is like a late game a late game winter deck, just because winter late game has like even more value. Like we have Toxic Sacrifice. But they have um, all their like freeze combos now, and like if they freeze us every turn, we can't do anything. Like, hmm. Ah no, I gave it to the wrong one. Okay, we're gonna we could keep waiting to Kinder's Grace, but I think I'm just gonna do it now. Oh, nice. Okay, we drew Sacrifice back. Mm. I wish I had a level 3 Ubus. That guy is a powerhouse.
Yeah, so this is one of those games where if we had something, we could literally just blow them out. Oh, we do have something. Okay, here we go. So you see? Um, no, let's not do that first. Let's do this first. All right, we just need we need to kill this thing and leave enough unit types on the board so that our Ubis can just blow them out. All right, so we have enough unit types. I think this is even three, so it's overkill. Yeah, because because Ubis himself counts as a knight, so <clears throat> that makes three different. All right, let's play one more, hit rank eleven, and then then we'll we'll call it off. Kikima. Like you see, we're going against decks that are like similar similarly upgraded. Oh, oh, okay, awesome. Awesome. We'll we'll see how this works out. Hmm. Okay, we're hoping for one of our own. Nope, we didn't get one. Okay, Brute Sage is kinda not as good as gifted recruits here. So in theory, I think the best way to counter um, a Hatcher's is to let it walk up to your base where there are very few tiles and then kill it there. I wonder if my Hatcher's hit... Oh. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Getting a taste of our own medicine here. <clears throat> wow. Okay. So So this game is going to be um harder than than our previous ones. Yeah, so I predict the meta is gonna is gonna turn very very uh um very very toxic, I guess. Okay, so we want to cycle hard for Kindred's Grace now, because we're on a clock. Let's push our front line up to deter him from killing our froggies. Five, six, seven. Okay, well, we actually have seven mana to play our whole hand next turn, so this might be better than Kindred's Gracing, because um, if we mulligan, then our play will suddenly become a whole lot worse. Okay, he's running Venomfall um, Spire, which is one of the cards that I would play in a control build, but um, I think it's it's a it's a little greedy. Like the game still hasn't oriented itself into playing late game cards like as consistently. Um, like you'll see here. Uh, we can't actually fill in his base. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chuck random frogs just to. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're just gonna play, play Ubis here. Okay, so this guy, this guy messed up big time. This is what you don't do. This is why. Okay, play. But if you're gonna try Shadow Fen and you want to try a control deck first, I would recommend try, try the aggro variant first. Like, look at this. Okay, this was, this was so greedy, like. Like, uh, if he has Flood the Gates, like, maybe something, but, but, um, yeah, no, he's done. Okay. That was a solid last game. He gave us a scare there, but, yeah, I think he, he just overestimated the, the power of Venom and Fall Spire. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll go back, uh, through the deck list and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit, bit about it. Um, cause... Because like it's hard to demonstrate everything in game, I guess, over a couple of games. So green prototypes, it's very standard card. Um, I'm gonna upgrade it as soon as I can. Um, <clears throat> just a uh, great card overall. North Sea Dog. So a lot of decks, um, like North Sea Dog, can fill in like some uses. Like later on, it can be like a high strength uh, last card play, and early on, it's mana filler. But that doesn't always justify it being in a deck. The reason why it's almost definitely an auto include in this deck is because we need more toxic sacrifice targets. Like a lot of the time, if you're playing a two mana, three mana toxic sacrifice target, um, 
It's just, uh, it's not as efficient as playing a one mana one. And also, we need units that don't move, but we're still fine with playing. Because a lot of times, if you play, if you get the higher mana, like Harpies of the Hunt, Harpies of the Hunt, it's a three mana card, it doesn't move. Um, it, it's, a lot of times, it can screw you over. Like, if you look, everything above this moves. We have Copper Skin, we have Dubious Hags, we have Gifted Recruits, we have, like, like everything here moves. So, North Sea Dog, sometimes it's very useful to just plop them down around, like, three units outside your base and just kill them. So, um, Toxic Sacrifice, MVP of the deck, um, I would, I would dub this, uh, variant, um, like, Toxic Aggro, because it, it, it revolves around this card, um, it's just, it's, it's super powerful, um, yeah, I love it, it's probably gonna get nerfed, uh, so, and it's only a common, so, so upgrade it anyways, guys, um, Copper Skin Ranger, I like it, um, Probably going to upgrade it to level 3 with um, only Fusion Stones, just so that it can start becoming a more efficient play. Um, it's it's not one of the best cards of the deck, but it does make it better. Um, Dubious Hags, I think. Uh, Worst Gifted Recruits, I guess. Um, I mean, it, it kind of matches the same strength level. Um, and actually, actually, in this deck, sometimes it's even a better Gifted Recruits. Like, we don't have anything like... Um, like, a lot of times... Which of the of the wild lets you um, make dubious hags better, but I think um, with enough frogs around, you can sometimes negate the dubious hags um, effect. So that at uh, at the same like upgraded level, like if it, if it was level four, I'd say I would generally prefer it to gifted recruits in this deck. Gifted recruits, obviously, um, best card in the game. Like in general, uh, can't live without them. As your hatchers, so this is the first one of our frog cards. I think upgrading it beyond level three, like obviously, um, makes it better, like objectively. But I don't think it's that necessary, just because it's hard to get more than four toads out. I think, um, uh, I think a lot of the times, uh, like there's too many units around just for four toads, uh, more than four toads to even come out. So if you can't upgrade him that hard, like I wouldn't worry about it. I think he's he's even good at level one, like just because he's he's a sticky card. Like, um, and, and, uh, at level one, three mana for three, that's the same as Westwind Sailors, right? Like, that, that's pretty good. So, um, Brood Sage, um, probably the worst card in this deck. Um, it does, like, some stuff sometimes. Like, if it spawns more frogs, it lets you, um, run, it lets you Kindred's Grace better. Like, but, uh, but, like, if you don't have them, I wouldn't worry about it. First Mutineers is your friend. Um, yeah, like, I, like, when, as you see, like, most of the time I was playing him, it was only because, like, I had, like, a lot of, um... I had a, I had a lot of um, mana, and so I could play my whole hand. Or like early game, like I just ha I was forced to play him. So he's okay. Um, Reign of Frogs, uh, it's a very good card. I think even at level one, it's pretty good. Like three mana for four toads is already like super solid. Can't wait to get to level four where um, it only costs two mana. But um, for now, like a three mana play, it's it's pretty good. Um, a lot of the times, um, opponents will try to clear out all of your frogs. Um, by playing like as many minions as they can, and if they do, like don't worry about it. It doesn't mean your rain of frogs is bad. Like you're still getting above average value for it. Like like three mana for four toads. That's very good. That's like fell flares level good. Except you're always getting um, all of all of the value. So it's a good card. Um, I didn't talk about it that much because I guess it's just kind of a standard shadow fan card by now. Um, Crimson Sentry. Uh, I didn't use it very much, as you noticed. Um, it's good to have a backup AOE clear because you can't just keep drawing Toxic Sacrifice. So I'd say I'd say run him. I don't feel that good about running him, but it's whatever. At level four, he deals three damage to surrounding units, which is pretty good again. But even at level four, like he only deals three damage. Like this is far worse than Toxic Sacrifice. Um, what can be like, like um, he's just outclassed. If you're gonna upgrade one of the poison units, it's Toxic Sacrifice, not Crimson Sentry. Kindred's Grace. Uh, this card might as well be uh, it, it might as well uh, honestly uh, just be a shadow fan card because you pretty much only use it on toads. It might as well just say give four strength to all toads. Like, like it's literally what it is. I, I can almost upgrade it to level four, which I'm pretty excited about because it pushes my combo like of of hatchers slash random frogs plus kindred's grace to one turn earlier, which will definitely up the power level of this deck. But as you can see, I wasn't always um like. I didn't always rush to go, um, like, like pull this combo off, because it's like, eventually I'll get it off, and then eventually I'll win, but like, I I would rather have map control, like, I'd rather fill in the enemy's base, um, I'd rather do all that than, 
than um than 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 play Kindred's Grace early. Just because once you clog up the board, you can't really play anything anymore. So you you can only watch your your units move forwards, and that's when the opponent can react most. And then like it it slows the game down overall. I think. Um, Ubis, I think he's just he's a great card. Um, really like well designed legendary. He's He's really good. I think I think he would be more balanced um, if they didn't buff his strength by one, honestly. But like, I'm not complaining. I have him now, so I I swear by him. Um, overall, like as as you noticed, none of the decks that we went against were really equipped well enough to fight us, except for the one poison deck that we went against, and then they messed up by playing a structure. So. I think this deck is pretty uncontested right now. Um, if we see more control decks rolling out with the with the new uh, Flood the Gates card, um, we were pretty prone to being blown out by Flood the Gates a couple times, honestly. Um, like like this card at like level two, at level two, level three. Um, I think I think it's a pretty solid control control deck uh, card, and um, I haven't seen any, which is why I haven't been playing around it. But if it does get if it does start getting played, then it will be pretty lethal to our strategy. Um, but um, as of now, like nothing can really nothing can really blow us out. Um, they nerfed winter like hard enough that our early game is is better, and they can't just like keep like drawing into more freeze. So overall, like I love the deck, um, and try it, guys. You will not be disappointed. All right, peace.